Hi everyone, happy Independent Venue Week. Welcome back to Sin City's week of webinars. Um, it's day five, it's our last webinar of the series. Um, thanks so much if you've tuned into any others up until this point. Um, today we're focusing uh, our talks on fighting the good fight. Um, and I've been really lucky to talk to um, five different people who run really great organizations across Wales. Um, so yeah, hope you stick around, enjoy and learn something. Um, and yeah, happy independent venue week. And if you haven't checked out any of the other, other chats that we've done, you've got plenty of opportunity to um, watch back on Twin City's Facebook and YouTube. So yeah, take care and enjoy. Hello, I'm Bethan Elvin and I'm the project manager of Horizons, a music project. It started six or seven years ago now. We're coming into our seventh year, starting in 2014. And the idea was to really build around the artist, to promote the artist using all the BBC platforms. It was um, an agreement between the Arts Council and the BBC to try and push Welsh music as far as we could take it to open up new opportunities. And I think that's what's kind of kept the momentum going is that we never quite know what those opportunities will be in any given year. One year, somebody would sing on television at Children in Need. The next year, they'll be performing at BBC Introducing Live. But it's the uniqueness of what comes up and what crops up and trying to hustle a bit on behalf of the artists. Yeah, absolutely. It's amazing. It's, it's one of those things that uh, when you think about horizons, you almost think, "What don't horizons do?" It's amazing the <laughs> amount of the amount of ways that you guys support uh, musicians in Wales. So, um, like, how obviously it's been going for seven years. How has the project changed in the last seven years? And you know, who who are the names that you've seen come through the project, and who have you engaged with? Um, I'm really proud of the track record of who we've supported, and I think it's important to remember as well as the groups of individual artists that have been selected to be part of that kind of longer program. That was called the Horizons 12, where 12 artists would really get pushed and taken in different directions and given as many stages as possible. There's also the funding element. And I think these days that's actually the strongest part of the project where uh, we're coming up to, I think, 170 artists now who have been funded over the last few years. And uh, the pot of money has been over £200,000 going directly to artists for the things that they need. Um, so names and uh, who's gone where. Uh, <laughs> I just think that, yeah, I, I think what's been interesting is seeing uh, the huge development. You know, it, it's only this last few weeks that we saw baby queens come back to do a live performance on Instagram and Monique is still making music. And I think even if people have developed and changed and changed their direction, like Cassie is a completely different artist now from what she started out doing when she started with Horizons. And um, Kizzy is an amazing artist that keeps developing and pushing herself. Edith has been phenomenal to watch the confidence that has come through all the opportunities she's had. Um, the rock bands, the big Welsh language bands that we've had like Gwilym and Tsunami and Candelas, and, um, they were already on the map and I'm not gonna take any credit for <laughs> anything that those bands have achieved, um, but lovely to be part of their journey, that's all. And Adwaith and <laughs> you see the list, yeah. it's a, it's yeah, a heavy yeah. hitting list. It's um, and it's bands endless. from Northwest like Kid Smoke and Campfire Social, um, and I don't know, it just really is a delight to feel that there isn't many artists that we've missed out on. Afro Cluster was an amazing festival band to take with us to be part of um, representing Wales. And that's what I feel like sometimes that we open a door to something people don't necessarily expect and try and push the boundaries of what we're representing from Wales as well. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's, it is it is amazing how many artists have in some way shape or form from Wales been involved with Horizons um, so if you know there's going to be a lot of young musicians or musicians in general that might be watching this and they're like okay cool I really want to engage with Horizons what what can you know what's available out there for for them to do in terms of engaging with you guys 
Well, more than ever, especially in the last few months, we've developed much more of a kind of new service in order that musicians and releases and music news gets out to people, job opportunities. Um, so I think, first of all, to make sure you're following the social media, to tell us about releases um, and to make sure that, you know, tell us the week it's coming out, but maybe mention it a week before as well to give us a bit of run up to the information. But, you know, just let us know, engage with what we're doing. Tell us if you like something, tell us if you don't like something. Um, the worst thing is to be silent and to, to kind of feel like we're not touching on your life or we're not part of your musical journey and we're not appreciating your music. Maybe we just need a little nudge to check it out. And I think there's nothing wrong with a little DM just saying, here's my music, this is what I'm up to. And most of the time, one of the team will answer uh, those queries. And that's the, that's the first step. And the second step is just to keep us informed. So don't expect life to change overnight because you've sent us a message. You know, just keep in touch. New tunes, new plans. What are you doing? How are you making it interesting? And soon enough, I'm sure Horizons will be very interested. Absolutely. It's one of the best things I think about following you guys on socials is that Every Monday I get my news from what's happened in Wales. And then it, it, every Friday when you guys are posting the releases, I've, I've discovered so many artists that I didn't even know existed in Wales through that. So that's such a valuable service that you guys are doing. I think if we did nothing else, the Friday new releases, there's nowhere else to find all kinds of musical genres from Wales. Um, you know, we don't have... Uh, a concise music blog that does this service, or it used to maybe be newspapers that would cover bands in some way. David Owens was amazing doing his kind of features on artists, but we've never really had somewhere to go, like a chart, um, even on radio, where you could just hear what was out that week. So I think that's a really valuable service. And like you said, all the team get involved with it, so all of us are trying to bring our knowledge from different artists and scour Facebook groups and various things. So please, if anybody knows of anything, um, we can't, we're not experts on every kind of musical genre in Wales. We'd love to cover more jazz and more folk and um, everything that's out there, because I think some of the weeks before Christmas, we were weekly saying here's 20 new releases from Wales here's 30 new artists you've never heard of on a weekly basis um, and I think yeah I, I really hope people enjoy that uh, that service yeah absolutely and the, one of the other things that I've liked that you guys have done is showcasing um, you know the music that's coming through the BBC introducing uploader do you want to just for anyone that might be watching that doesn't know what that is and what that does do you want to touch upon that I'll try and do it. It's, it's so complicated. To think. There's a relationship between BBC Introducing and Horizons because I'm one of the BBC Introducing DJs playing new Welsh music. So we have this amazing resource at our fingertips, which is uh, the uploader. And BBC Introducing across the whole of the UK use the uploader. We share music between our shows and network shows, dance shows. There's drop boxes that we send music to for one extra for playlist consideration. So really it's a valuable resource and Horizon's just tapping into the amount of music coming in every week. I possibly get like a hundred artists with new tracks every week come into that. So anybody who sent music and is despondent that they haven't heard from any of us, I think that's the first thing is, you know, it might take me a few weeks or there's no harm in giving us a nudge on social or, you know, don't worry about it. It's like a really congested music market at the moment, maybe more, more so because of lockdown as well. But that's the relationship. BBC Introducing is a radio network. Uh, they play music on Radio One. They play music across the UK at Walton, Lisa Gwillem, Hugh Stevens, myself, we're all part of this amazing network. And then Horizons is kind of filtering just some of the artists coming through which is just a database basically but an incredible resource yeah absolutely that's amazing um so obviously this week is independent venue week 
And uh, I'm sure that if people have been following this page, you would have seen that on Tuesday, uh, SimCity were part of something very exciting that you guys have organized. Um, and today, when this goes out, is Friday. Uh, so it's the last day of what you've been doing this week. Do you want to touch upon what you've done? Well, you know, there's two ways to look at it. Somebody said to me, oh, is it a bit futile celebrating venues when we can't go there? But I think it's even more important than ever to highlight the stories behind these community hubs and the heart of the community in so many different places around Wales. And it was such a joy to see a musical map forming of places that are really familiar names. Um, and, you know, we, we made a special effort to go out with a capital city this year. Last year, we were at club with a 10 band, three floor lineup. But this year, it was about going around Wales and really seeing where these venues are. And an amazing map, really, from Queen's Hall in Narborough, Sin City, just so famous, you know, and it's kind of nice to feel like you can see and feel the sticky floor. <laughs> and then, Queen, you know, so, oh, Neadhar Gwen in Bethesda, what an amazing location in Calorie. And uh, we'd love to go. I, I think we should do more of this and just see the musical map of Wales is more than just venues, it's studios, it's, um, you know, youth hubs, it's music courses, it's, it's so many different things. And, it's a joy getting out to see the real Wales, I suppose. And um, what a joy this week has been. And thanks to everyone who supported it. Superb. So if uh, someone hasn't seen it yet, where can they go to, uh, to watch it? So we've got mini documentaries on all of these music venues, including Sin City. And it's at bbc.co.uk slash horizons. So yeah, do like, share, comment and uh, send it far and wide. We'd love to just really spread the, the gospel of uh, Welsh music, basically. And I, I think more the more I've been working on this project, the more I've realised how unique this scene is. Um, Sam from Le Pub mentioned the fact that all the English music venues are mainly around urban hubs, whereas the Welsh picture is very different, where you've got music venues where you wouldn't expect to have a music venue. And that helps develop a culture and a community of musicians who have got somewhere to be and uh, brings people together, doesn't it? Like Queen's Hall, Narberth, is, it, it just has an atmosphere and they've got such an amazing past as well with gigs from Elton John and, um, you know, things that we just don't know about until we did this research. So, yeah, I think we should find out a few more as well, some other venues for down the road. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So. One of the other things that we've been chatting about um, all this week, really, with Sin City is kind of how people in the music industry and music scene in Wales got to where they are. Now, I know that to, to very succinctly explain how you got to this point would be very tricky. Um, but do you want to kind of just give like a rough guide to, you know, getting getting out there and any tips for anyone considering a career in music? I honestly think that your passion will guide you. And for me, it was just going to university in Cardiff because I loved the music and I'd been coming to gigs. I'd been traveling from Mid Wales to gigs in Cardiff before uh, I was uh, old enough and uh, going to see some of the bands like the Mannix. Um, and it had such an influence on me that I had to come to Cardiff to live and was part of the music scene. And that, that was kind of the starting point and I think even now with the voices or the younger voices coming through, people's own musical interests and passions, if they find a way of expressing it on social media, blogging, it, you really will stand out. And that's all I was doing was writing for a local magazine, Golog. I wrote about the artist Pete Fowler and Super Furries picked up on the artist. You know, I think being passionate is key to everything. And... Um, I've just followed my interests and it took me to Radio 1, that took me to festivals around the world, DJing um, and yeah, just the passion hasn't died, thankfully, so I'm still doing it. <laughs> it's been pushed to the edge a few times, but you know. 
<laughs> I can imagine. I'm sure you've got some amazing stories, which is kind of where I want to want to finish. Because obviously, again, independent venue week, it would be. I'm sure that again, it's going to be a list as long as your arm. What are like the top gigs from independent venues in your life? Like, is there is there one that stands out? Well, I'll I'll never forget my first gig, proper gig. I think I'd been going to the Steadvods, and that had uh, you know quite a lasting influence but my first sort of proper gig was the Mannix in what was called the Hanging Gardens at Cardiff University and I'm not even sure what that would be called now Solus or it's not the big hall but the venue up the top so it's still like 500 capacity venue and that was my first gig and it was the Mannix and it was full of punks and goths and absolute crazy bunch of people there was moshing mm -hmm. I was down the front, I'd never been to a gig before. I was wearing my nan's furs, you know, completely head, and, head over heels uh, in love with the band. And what a lasting image that will, nothing will beat that gig. Um, but I also remember loads of club gigs when I, student days of going to see Gorky's and people just climbing the walls just to kind of see what was going on and just mayhem. And even, you know, some hip hop gigs back in the day as well in club with uh, the promoters called Hustlers. And they were just off the scale for environment and um, energy and fun. And I've, you know, got vivid memories of um, that whole scene. And you could go to a jazz night one night at club and hip hop the next and then see a Welsh band on the weekend. And it felt like it all was part of the same scene. It was brilliant amazing god is are there any oh, yeah a bit, a bit nostalgic with my favorite gigs i think um if i'm trying to think of like more recent ones um i i, I think they crowd together a bit because i do so many connected to work but there's all sorts you know i remember seeing uh, flaming lips in a small venue in austin texas when i went to south by uh, the festival out there and you know seeing anything in a small venue is always going to be insane. I think that's the point. But even the last Soon Festival, Griff's gig in Tramshed was beautiful and stunning. And there, there are gigs, there are so many gigs crowded around in my brain that um, I, I remember somebody saying you should write them down because unfortunately I can't remember when I saw things and when things happened um, and the biography is never ever going to get published. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing well thank you so much beth that's been amazing and um yeah uh how can people what's your like social media tag if people want to follow i mean i'll tag it from below um i think if i if they're sending music to send it to the bbc introducing uploader if they want to send a message um through horizons because then the whole team can answer questions rather than me personally if they really want to say something personally to me then you'll find me on, on across all the social media pages so that's fine but yeah I'd rather they go to the Horizons Project and BBC Introducing just uh, keep music in one place <laughs> yeah definitely thank you very much Beth I hope you've had a good independent venue week cheers, cheers Simon and all the best to Sin City what a great club too hello everyone and hello Simon thank you for inviting me here today it's uh I feel not underdressed. I just feel like I've got a very, uh, you know, an impressive background. But anyway, the my background and who I am. Yeah, my name is Spike Griffiths. I am fundamentally a youth music development officer, and I work, I have worked for some time in that role. I think it dates back to about 2010, maybe a little bit before. Predominantly working in South Wales, and more recently having the ability and, and, and gratefully allow, allowing my work now, uh, the work that I do to stretch across Wales. So uh, working with projects, uh, in particular the Forte project and the newly emerging project, which is called Beacons, which has a, uh, a Wales wide remit, uh, enabling us to hopefully positively intervene in the lives of young people. I, I didn't start as a youth music development officer. It was a very non-linear career and I think I've done everything from um, being a handing out flyers on a wet Wednesday night in the centre of Cardiff to 
being a runner, to being a roadie, to being a stage manager, to even being a tour manager, Peter Andre. You know, it's it's a very, um, I wouldn't say it's illustrious, and I certainly wouldn't say it's glamorous, but it is very checkered. We started Forte in 2015, and at, the, at that point, there wasn't too many um, organizations doing talent development work, apart from Horizons. And, and they, for me, were, that project was an inspiration because even though, you know, I had had five years of being a youth music development officer in the valleys, in the South Wales Valleys, and in particular in the Rhonda Valleys, I, we were sort of um, supporting young artists coming through and we had nowhere else to take them. They were coming, you know, reaching a plateau and, you know, that in some respects, we couldn't hold their hands for too much longer because we had to keep supporting younger people as, as they, their needs were sort of needed to be met. Anyway, Horizons came on and it was really great that in the first year of Horizons, I, I think we had a very strong percentage of artists that we had been supporting in Rhonda and Taff um, County Council in the Sonic Industry Music Programme that jumped onto the Horizons selection. So at that point then, I thought, that actually probably needed uh, most of these artists need some grounding um it can be quite daunting to go from n- no to zero you know sorry zero to a hundred uh, uh, and be thrust into the public eye without you know um understanding some of the basics so i kind of went away and, and worked out what could be uh, an exciting and interesting and a, and a rewarding project that could support the needs of a, of a young person um who was talented but also it, we could positively intervene in, in in their creative journey and provide them with a good framework and who knows what would happen after the year that they would have in 40 um and who knows if you know what success looks like to them but if, if for that year we could change them give them some aspiration some good guidance and some care then um it, it was up to them then so yeah, we've, we've been going for five years and actually six years, I tell a lie. This is our sixth year and mm-hmm. it feels, you know, we've supported 50 acts in the process. And this year we finally uh, took the leap of faith and, and, and became a Wales wide project. So breaking out of the five regions which we traditionally worked in, which were Merthyr, Caerphilly, Bridgen, Vale of Morgan and Rhonda Cynantaf. And then start to you know look uh, at supporting young people who we've never engaged with before, never had the opportunity or, or the access to these young people. And um, in a really weird way, I guess the COVID allowed it to happen because say, yeah. you know one of the few things that came from, or one of the few good things has come from COVID in in our eyes was that we could uh, we could certainly engage with people on a digital context, and um, yeah. we migrated all our work in. March when when the lockdown one came around uh, and we've only had that to work with so we could we could reach out and I've been struggling for some time to work out how on earth we became a pan Wales project and yeah. you know how, where I'd, how many Airbnbs I'd need to book to try and get around the country and just support people but yeah um thankfully it's I've been able to do it from from here the comfort yeah. of my living room you know uh. So this year you've got nine artists instead of six. I'm going to test you here. Who are those nine artists? Okay, so yeah, we were originally going to go with six. Uh, we were going to make a little bit of our sort of branding in terms of 46, the sixth year. We only have enough budget to run for six months. And um, inevitably we were thinking, well, that's just six acts. In the 11th hour, we had a little bit more funding to push it to nine, which was uh, a blessing. And um yeah, that, so let's go a rundown of the nine then. So we have a Darren, yeah. we have Alina, we have Dempsey, we have Hemes, we have King Khan, Lewis, Mary Matthias, the Honest Poet, and last but not least, because he is from Swansea, Mojo Jr. Amazing. Wow. That's so, um, very good it's, going. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's also, <laughs> well, it is also a, a really wonderful, um, uh, it just has, a diversity yeah. uh, it has in terms of gender balance um geography of course and um genres you know we had so many applications this year we could have easily run about four uh, i could hand and heart say four confident four day projects but um we only have enough resources and enough budget to um 
it's it's yeah for sure at least trial this this first year so obviously with forte you work exclusively with obviously these nine acts so if yep. there's any uh you know aspiring and young musicians that are watching this and they're thinking oh i would love to be on forte and there's nothing there for me now obviously hopefully next year there'll be another round of artists but i thought it'd be nice to obviously segue into beacons and what opportunity mm. that poses for um for young people so do you want to give a little background as to how beacons came about and and what it is yeah um i'm not a musician and i've always um sort of faked it a little bit you know we could have been in the music industry i've got four guitars lying around you but i can't play any of them and what i'm trying to get at is that my journey into the music industry was putting on live events and learning all those skills there so I started a project called the Young Promoters Network, which was um, back in 2010. And that was supporting young people who wanted to step into the music industry, but didn't want to necessarily get behind the mic. They mm -hmm. wanted to be lighting engineers or stage managers or promoters. And um, that project was really successful in its locality in, in the valleys. And um, we've got some really good stories emerging from there where young people went on to, to really pursue careers you know being music industry lecturers to working with companies like Orchard or in the BBC so I I never forgot about that that project and I always wanted at some point to bring myself back to that project but but to expand it again and four days obviously now a, a Panwell's project and and my aim was that I could mesh them I could somehow try to mesh the the findings and, and the, the system that we have with Forte and can and bring these young this idea, this young promoters network into it together. So supporting those young people who really want to get into the industry. And that's where Beacons came about. Um, I'd be doing a lot of research over the last year or two about how we could create a new uh, project that would be pan wheels and developing the music industry or the future music industry personnel. And um uh, and again, I guess when I had this idea of this like large, huge project costing loads of money, never really probably would happen because it was just unfeasible. But then COVID came around and then we all moved to digital and we'd already been thinking of a digital platform for Beacons, one way young people could engage with it and more importantly could build it, could feel part of it, could create a community could learn, of course, um, and could collaborate. Yeah, uh, all the things that I was doing with the young people back in the day in the Young Promoters Network. So Beacons was born um, from that, and it, it really did start to emerge uh, as a real promising project at the end of last year. And we applied for some funding from Youth Music and really keen to work with um, disadvantaged areas, uh, underrepresented, uh, young people and um, also targeting rural communities uh, and digital was the key to it so we, we were successful in the application and then um, later on also were successful in support in gaining some really substantial support from Welsh government and moving into 2021 obviously where we find ourselves now we're, we were able to get going uh, prior to 2020 it was just you know we were having a million zoom conversations about what beacons could be like or in an ideal world but certainly didn't have any money to do it so finally we've been funded finally we've been supported and there's a big you know it's a strong belief amongst um, the team and myself that we can really make something positive emerge from from this pandemic and beacons well is is already happening it's it's already being formed backstage by young people who have come and, and have got started to get their teeth into it and that and you will see some really exciting ideas emerge soon and um, yeah it's kind of watch this space but as with all projects they take time and I never really want to rush a project I want to make it meaningful and you know stepping in the right direction rather than just get it out and you know put your flag in the ground this needs time because it needs to be a long-term project not a short-lived yeah absolutely overnight thing you know it's so exciting to see as well it's great so yeah, yeah. also you've got a job opportunity available that closes oh, yes. on the 31st of january is that right 
It does, yes. We extended it and um, quite neatly extended for this interview, really. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so we really want to encourage people to uh, apply for the op four opportunities which are available in Beacons. And we're looking for four young people aged between 18 and 25 who have a creative flair, want to pursue a career in the music industry, are willing to work as a team to share ideas to really sort of carve a way forward for themselves. We want young people to, to, to jump on board and, and grab hold of it with two hands, really. Um, it will, at current, be a digital platform, but you know that, that means that we can still engage videographers, photographers, graphic designers, social media, you know, um, uh, people who are, who are really good at, in terms of utilizing all the social media assets. Um, and we want people to come on board and, and, and not just do things, we want to support them. So we want to develop them as individuals, giving them mentorship um, system, giving them professional support, giving them as well as four day mental health uh, support and, you know, giving them skills that they can use for the rest of their life, not just for uh, the period in which they'll be working with us for. It's a short term opportunity but we're hoping to rotate them. So meaning to say, we're hoping that many of these opportunities will now come around. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a chance for them to cut their teeth, for them to express themselves and, and to have fun and, and learn. And, and, you know, hopefully, you know, when we can emerge from all this pandemic, we can, Beacons will be a real life um, project. And so we can put on live events, we can network, we can circuit gigs, we can do tours, we can, Bring, bring things to life in people's locality as well as a, as a online space. Oh, it's so exciting everything you're doing. It's really great. Really, really great. Oh, thank you. In depth of why and how is amazing as well. So obviously it's <laughs> independent venue week um, and we're, we're doing this week long celebration here at Sin City. So what I've been asking everyone is um, to share maybe a couple of, a couple of your favorite gigs from years gone by in independent venues. Um, so yeah, Spike, any any specifics? Goodness, I mean, um, I'm biased maybe because I used to run venues. That, that was a double-edged sword because you know, you're working, you're kind of keeping your eyes on everything, but you're there, you're in the middle of it. You see things that ordinary people would never see. Um, and uh, I got many, as a punter, you know, I remember the Strokes came to Cardiff and oh God, I can't even remember, 2001, I think, maybe. And mm -hmm. they played in Club Iverbach. And there was so much heat on the strokes coming over to the UK. Yeah. Anyway, um, it was, a, yeah, it was a brilliant gig, quite mem memorable. Club is, is, a, is a, you know, is a, is a, you know, a church for these uh, moments. It's just a wonderful um, space. And, you know, many gigs. And I've put on many gigs there as well, which have been really memorable. Um, I used to run Bar Fry for a little bit and saw some amazing bands there come along. Kings of Leon as, as young 16 year olds, you know, first time in the UK. I couldn't understand a word I said because I was speaking in um, in fast uh, South Walian uh, yeah. form. And, um, and yeah, lo loads of gigs. Calvin Harris played there and he was too tall for the stage. So um, his head, you know, the, the, the stage kind of cropped him there. So I had to put him on the floor in the main, you know, in a very small space and everyone sort of stood around while he DJ. Um, yeah, so just being there, working there and, and understanding the importance of venues, as I keep on saying this, this idea of church, but people do go there to, you know, to, to have this, in some respects, you know, religious experience, you know, everyone's there, it's, it's, it's communal and, you know, you, I've seen people who've gone on to form marriages, you know, meeting in gigs and, and having kids and, and friends for life and all that and it's just these amazing encounters so i've got so many gigs i could just rattle on all, all yeah, day yeah, about them a whole, whole chat just about gigs <laughs> yeah 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 and and but you know i couldn't stress the importance of independent venues because they are the lifeline they are the platform and without them all the work that i do with young people would be futile because it's about keeping and maintaining those small spaces in order for them to be nurtured, for audiences to grow, and for, if we're talking about Wales, for that rich, you know, the prosperity of Wales and, and the cultural 
and the cultural sort of you know uh, belief we have in our nation you know it's 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 right. about expressing ourselves so yeah they're, they're just so important amazing well thank you so much spike that's been amazing my pleasure thank you i've got to know you even more oh well there we are these 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 sort of encounters do open up to me but yeah, um, definitely. it was a nice bit of therapy thank you yeah no worries <laughs> thank you much. and uh hopefully we'll see you at a, at a gig soon oh <laughs> i really nothing. i really I really hope I bought some tickets for gigs. I'm just clinging on that they. Yeah. So hi, yeah, I'm Andy Jones, and I'm one of the co-founders of the Focus Whale Showcase Festival in Wrexham. And uh, my main function as part of the team is as the music programmer. Amazing. So for those people that don't know, what is Focus Wales? So we're a multi-venue showcase festival and conference. So we have 20 venues that people can hop around with a wristband um, that gets, in, gets them into every performance that's happening, uh, capacity permitting. And um, they also get to go to a conference where there's lots of people from the music industry talking about um, what's available in terms of support, um, best practices, um, speed meeting sessions, networking opportunities, things like that. So. The, the conference offers a whole a whole world of possibilities for new artists who are coming through. And I mean, ultimately, that's the whole purpose of the festival is to put new talent from Wales on a platform where they can be seen by music industry, but also where they can spend some time with industry over the three days and um, hopefully find some compatible matches where they might want to work together going forward. Yeah, amazing. It's uh, having been to the festival is it's amazing and also amazing that it's in Wrexham as well. Um, yeah, we often have the um, it's quite funny, actually, because um, with Ryan Reynolds um, recently um, buying Wrexham Football Club, you know, they've had the oh, well, why Wrexham thing? And like on a much smaller level, we had that. I mean, as soon as we our profile grew, we've been doing it 10 years now, but once we'd done a couple of editions, people would just be like, well, why Wrexham? As in the presumption being, well, surely you'd move it to Cardiff. And we always think, well, actually, it works really well in a town like Wrexham because the whole point is that the music industry can see as much talent as possible. So what you need for that to be possible is loads of venues really, really close. So, you know, and, and I've compared it back in the day when, you know, I've been to events in Cardiff where you'd be, at chapter and then you'd want to get back to Club of Bach or to Goody Who as it was back in the day, um, that venue and um, or to Buffalo. And, you know, the venues would be separated and you'd need to jump in a cab um, or it'd be just that little bit too much of a stretch. And the feedback, you know, well, you know, feedback from me and other delegates would be, oh, it's just too much of a stretch. I'm not, I'm going to miss it. So we realised really quickly with Irexum that the feedback was that that the industry that were coming to it were seeing 10 plus bands a night because you can go next door to see another bunch of bands across two different stages in the same building. Um, and we, we can do a lot of that. We have lots of buildings, lots of not necessarily traditional venues, but buildings where we can put in two or three different rooms. And um, I mean, for the bands, basically, it just means there's an increased chance that those people from the industry that they might meet in the day at the conference are actually going to make the show. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Wrexham has been a really sort of welcoming place for the festival, really embracing of this sort of diverse programme that we have every year. I mean, it's one of the most diverse festivals in Europe with um, you know, 90 different international artists performing at the festival, artists from all around the world. Um, and, and the locals love it, you know, that you, know, you might have a a band from South Africa or Madagascar or Brazil or Japan. It's like, we don't get international events like that in our area. So I think having, having that, you know, aspect of people aren't complacent about having a big international event. They actually really love it and embrace it and feel like it's theirs in a way that I think in, if we tried it in Cardiff, it wouldn't be the same. And I, and I, I think it's, it's always a struggle in the bigger cities you know, for all the reasons, London doesn't really have a major conference that people really care about because London already has so much going on. The same applies to New York, Cardiff on a smaller extent. You know, it's a fantastic city that we're really proud of as a capital, but 
yeah, focus well just makes loads of sense being in Wrexham for the for all of those reasons. So, you know, there's going to be a, a few musicians that will be watching this and, you know, they may be playing at the next Focus Wells. They may not be. Um, you know, if if they're not, how can they get involved maybe next year and, and this year? Yeah, I mean, one of the, the things about my job that I don't enjoy so much is the fact that, you know, we're so subscribed with applications. We receive... Well, for the most recent edition, we received over 5,000 artist applications. Um, so with 5,000 artist applications, that means there's a lot of artists that we just can't find the slot for. It's just not possible. And, you know, the long list, the long list of artists that we think are good is usually a thousand strong. Um, so they're all artists that have a credible case. And it's it's often it comes down to fine margins. Um so I guess on one side, it's not to be too dispirited, basically. If if we don't if we haven't been able to find a slot for you on one edition, we do keep an eye on artists and see how they're, you know, see how they're developing and see what, you know, see what the sort of activities um, are looking like in the background, um, you know, beyond a particular edition. And, you know, I, I make it my job really to keep an eye on, on artists that are coming through and seeing how they're developing, see how the releases go, see how the tours go. So just keep in contact with us, engage with us on social media, um, you know, tag us and things and let us know what you're up to. That doesn't do any harm. Um, it doesn't guarantee that we're going to be able to find the slot, but like, you know, just keep, it keeps you sort of toe in the water and then apply officially, you know, um, and, I, and I say that like that because we'll have so many artists who'll just ping us a message on Facebook Um and, you know, if you can just imagine with 5,000 artist applications coming in officially, it's just impossible to manage it any other way other than through that official portal. Um, so, you know, it's completely free for anybody to apply um, anywhere in the world, all genres. And we want the festival to be as representative as possible as everything that's going on in Wales. And, you know, we have lots of different music communities, lots of different exciting scenes emerging all the time. So just apply. We have so many artists who will who will contact us just when we've announced the artists. Yeah. And it's just, you know, it's such a, you know, face par moment where you're like, why didn't you apply? Yeah. And, you know, I think there's possibly a lot of artists who think, well, I shouldn't have to apply or maybe underestimate the sheer volume of artists that there are in Wales. Mm. Might think, well, I'm doing something good, so you should just invite me when the reality is, there's there's circa 500 active new music artists in Wales. I mean, discounting artists in pubs doing covers, new music artists writing their own music and pushing that. It's about 500 in Wales. And, um, you know, I've already outlined, we have about 90 of the artists performing at the festival are from overseas um, and about 200 are from Wales um, or circa of, of 200 from the UK, maybe about 180 are from Wales, something yeah. like that. So if you apply officially, you have a good chance of getting a show. But the, I think the issue that we have is that so many artists won't do that or, the, or they'll apply really, really late. Yeah. And, you know, the nature of it is that we have to announce, you know, we don't just announce 300 artists in one go. We'll announce in waves of 40 and 50. So if an artist applies to us really early on, that definitely helps. Um, for 2021, we are committed on all the slots. We've not announced everything. We do have more announcements, but we have actually booked everything. Um, so we are, you know, the next sort of opportunity to apply to us will be for Focus Well 2022. Um, we'll be going back, or pending how things go with the virus, we'll be going back to May um, to our traditional weekend um, next year. Um, and ahead of that, we'll be opening our applications this summer. So I guess any artists who are intrigued, maybe I guess through this might just be learning about Focus Wales, don't know who we are, just follow us on social media, I would say. We do have a mailing list that people can join as well if they go to our website, focuswales.com. And then, you know, they'll definitely get a direct email when, when we open the applications. Um, but follow us on social media. That's a good way to get a heads up on not only applications for the festival, but applications for other things that we do. Um, elsewhere in the UK and overseas um, yeah that's I mean that's the best way to do it and also when, you know when you apply you know we 
we do ask some significant questions in, in our application. And so a tip I do really like to relay time and time again, whenever I do these things, is just how important it is to answer the questions within an application. Yeah. Um, because artists, you know, for example, one of the questions that we always ask is how will you make the most of the conference? And, art, and, and sometimes artists will actually reply that they'll just let the music do the talking. And, you know, that is from our side, from what we're looking for in that answer, that's like the worst answer that you could possibly give because it's such a competitive environment where you've got 20 different venues and, you know, all the artists are competing to get the industry into the room so that they can hopefully see them. You know, we want to see artists who have got a bit of an action plan and they're saying, well, I'm releasing a single around that time and we'll be doing a big push to press and radio. And um, we're also do, doing a bunch of shows around it. And we're going to be doing a tour and Focus Well could form part of that. And, you know, that's a good answer. And yeah. we're going to attend, we're going to attend the conference every day. That's a really good answer because that, that gives confidence to me as potentially someone who's going to book the artist, but not only to me, there's, there's over 20 people who have a say in who gets booked for the festival we work with lots of different partners from BBC Horizons to PRS Foundation, lots of different music magazines and radio, um, yeah, BBC Wales. And we all basically get to dive into the applications talent pool and everybody can see who's applied and, you know, have, have sight, basically have eyes on those answers. So if your answer is really, is really poor, for that question, then that doesn't help. And also, you know, like a tech spec, we ask for something really technical. I say really technical, really basic, but technical in a stage plot. Yeah. And the amount of artists that won't give us a stage plot or will just upload a photo of them on stage. <laughs> and, and, it, and it immediately just makes that artist a bit of a pain in the neck because what, what we need to see there is what are your technical requirements? If we're gonna book you, because we're making a judgment as to which artist is going to work in which venues. So we're looking at all the slots that are available. Yeah. And if we don't know what your technical requirements are, because by all accounts, you're a bit too lazy to actually answer the question properly that we've asked, that does count against you. So like, I don't rush it. It shouldn't take too long, but don't rush it and, and answer the questions properly. Um, it can make all the difference in the world. Um, but yeah, you know, as I say, it's very competitive. So I, you know, I, it's it's one of those. I always you know, just tell artists it's not a defining judgment on on you as an artist if you don't get a slot with our yeah. festival, any festival. Sometimes it's just it's just um, fine margins, and there are only only so many slots that you can offer out. Because obviously it's Independent Venue Week. Um, we're wrapping up every one of these talks today by um, asking our guests if you had to pick one. I'll allow you to if you if you can't pick between them, but like the best show that you've seen in a in a small independent venue or just a independent venue. It could be any any oh. any year, any time. Um, it's a hard oh. question. <laughs> That's really tough. And um, yeah, I, you know what? This I I'd probably say. <laughs> is it? Can I say a show that I put on myself? Yeah, of course. Really bad to say. Yeah, yeah. I think like. <laughs> I remember we, we put on the band I mentioned earlier from Japan, Moja. Um, we put on, I think they first came to, and they were playing the festival this October, actually. Um, we're bringing them back. But we first put them on in Wrexham at a venue called Central Station, as it was called back then. Um, it's closed at the minute, obviously. But, um, but yeah, we put them on, I think it was 2014. Um, yeah, I think it was that year. And um, and honestly, they blew me away from what I could see online. And it was a pure punt, you know, reaching in the dark. I, I had no idea the sort of the ferociousness of this band. <laughs> and we put them on and we put them on as main support. We thought they're coming a long way from Japan. I'm really in love with their music. And we put them on before the headliner that we had on that year, who I won't name because we had lots of different headliners. So people can guess. <laughs> and I don't want to throw them under the bus. That that they they played a brilliant set, the headliner. But the Moja, the band from Japan, completely stole the show. And it was like 250 people packed into the side room, the second stage of this venue. And everyone, you know, when people are doing that thing where they're looking 
to the side at other people. Yeah. Just like, what is happening? <laughs> yeah. What is happening? It was absolutely insane. Um, and, uh, you know, the only way I can describe them, it's like a planet being born. You know, it's it's so explosive. Yeah. Um, a bit like if you took all of the Mars Volta material, but then just condensed their songs into like, you know, the one and a half minutes of pure excitement. Amazing. It's like every song is like that. So it's just, you know, but maybe a bit more like at the drive-in then. Um, <laughs> but, you know, all of that sort of explosive excitement. But it's just the two-piece, female drummer Masumi and um, Haru um, on bass. Wow. And, yeah, like nothing else. And That's it was phenomenal. Amazing. They sold out every every bit of merchandise they had within five <laughs> minutes. Wow. And they were on a tour. <sighs> They finished That's it and they amazing. were like, what are we going to do? <laughs> they, they, they had like, you know, a hundred t-shirts. They had a hundred of everything thinking, oh, we can sell five of these a night. Yeah. But they sold everything, t-shirts, vinyls, you know, tapes they'd done. Wow. Um, it was amazing. That's and, so you know, cool. They've got this lovely little relationship with Wales now. They absolutely love, love the place. And they've been back since, they, they've been back since and sold like a couple hundred tickets um so you know in their own right like you know as a a sort of touring artist and yeah they're coming back to do a special show in october for folks 2021 you know hopefully we can get there yeah Um, yeah well i'll be i'll be there if we're if we're if we've got the green light for focus wales i'm gonna go see mojo that sounds amazing (laughs) yeah no i definitely recommend the band and you know they're not over often being based in tokyo Oh, amazing. Well, thank you so much, Andy. That's been amazing to hear more about you and the festival. And um, and yeah, fingers crossed for October. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so I'm Dave Ball. I'm the uh, Sector Development Manager for Music at Creative Wales, uh, which basically means every time someone comes in and asks us about music and funding for music and how to do stuff with music, then it gets sent to me. Um, mm. and I look after all of that so um, it's pretty wide, it's pretty varied um, which is, is, is great, it's fun um, lots of different things to do and different people to speak to so uh, yeah, I love it Amazing, good stuff and for anyone watching that doesn't know what Creative Wales is could you could you explain what, what it is and what it does? Yeah, so Creative Wales is, um, is essentially a, um, a, a body within Welsh Government um, focusing, as the name suggests, on the creative industries, um, we uh, we differentiate from the Arts Council, who we work with really closely. But we differentiate from the Arts Council in the sense that the focus of everything that we do is more on um, the business and economic side of the creative industries. Um, so we focus less on subsidised arts and more on um, sort of you know the, the more money making elements of it, if you like. So um, there are three main sort of teams. Um, within within it, obviously myself and, and, and the three guys I work with in, in music. We've also got a team who look after the film and TV, um, the big productions that you see shooting all over Wales at the moment, Discovery of Witches and things like that, um, and then another for digital media. Um, we do also cover all sorts of other bits and pieces, you know, everything from like architecture to fashion, um, but they're more, uh, it's slightly more reactive, I would say, to those type of things. And um, yeah, the, the great thing is that since we launched um, almost exactly a year ago now, um, which was timed well with the pandemic <laughs> just after, um, but um, since since we launched part of what, what was built into it was that there was going to be a team of people specifically focusing on music, um, which has been great because it's uh, it's been a it's been a real lifesaver, I think, in some ways for for a lot of venues and a lot of businesses in, in the music industry um, with obviously everything that's gone on uh, in the last sort of 10 months or so. Yeah, absolutely. It's, I imagine it was uh, a baptism by fire going straight into a pandemic. Yeah, do, you want to, do you want to touch upon bit, yeah. like the, the work that you've done? Obviously, you've been quite instrumental in, in supporting supporting venues over the last year. Yeah, so I mean, I, I've been I've been within what was the creative industries team within Welsh government um, for for a couple of years beforehand as well for the for the time that I was there. Um, so we'd started doing some bits and pieces. Um, we'd put some funding into things like um, the uh, the industry sessions at Soon last year, the Welsh Music Prize for the last couple of years, um, Hub Festival, Swansea Fringe. 
um, the Beacons project with Forte. Um, we've been supporting stuff along with PRS Momentum, and we launched a, 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 a small venue fund at the launch last year, uh, which at the time was going to be a small amount of money for uh, grassroots music venues across Wales to be able to apply into um, for improvements and, and things that they needed um, just to, to sort of to help with, you know, there's not the cash flow, there's, there's not the... Um, the, the spare cash, if you like, within venues to be able to do some of the things sometimes that you really need to do, whether that's like upgrading your PA um, or changing the floor or sort of doing out your toilets, painting up the frontage, you know, all sorts of little things that you kind of need to do, but they're not high enough up the priority list that when you've got a little bit of cash, you can afford to really do it because the risk of, you know, a show not selling as well as you think it will or whatever. Um, so we had some stuff in place anyway. And then obviously the, the pandemic hit, you know, we, we, the funny thing was the team doubled in size across the whole of creative um, on the uh, the Monday after lockdown hit. Um, everybody started. So there was a, a sort of a skeleton staff of us that were there from the outset. Um, so they all came in straight into the, into the pandemic. Um, so we were, I mean, we were lucky in that we were, we were able, because we had that venue fund, we were able to sort of fairly immediately launch a relief fund yeah. um, where we gave up to 25,000 to, um, grassroots venues yeah. uh recording studios rehearsal spaces um and a couple of other bits and pieces um essentially to get them through um the sort of two months coming because at that point that was what we were all sort of hoping and thinking yeah. was going to happen so we helped to cover people with like the loss of wet stock um cancellations uh having to pay insurance you know stuff where they'd already committed to pay bands or promoters or or whatever it might have been um so that people as, as much as possible people didn't end up out of pocket you know we gave money towards people paying the salaries of the, the freelance staff and the and the casual staff the bar staff things like that through the dates that they had to cancel um you know obviously that didn't um didn't end up being enough to, <laughs> to cover people throughout the whole thing yeah. um and when the cultural recovery fund across the uk then came in um, we worked with the Arts Council uh, and with wider elements of, of Welsh Government, you know, the events teams, the heritage teams and the culture teams um, to create uh, as best we could something that was would cover as much of the industry as we could we could help. So um, our bit of the cultural recovery fund went out in September. Um, it was then people had about a month to submit. Um, and again, it was focused on grassroots music venues um recording studios and rehearsal spaces um there were other elements that were able to get funding through some of the other bits um the arts council fund a lot of stuff there was freelancer funding available through the local authorities so um you know it like like everything with the um you know with the funds for for covid um across all industries there have been bits where people have, have fallen through the cracks um you know which is 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 a shame it, it, it's it, we've done our best to try and avoid that happening. Um, you know, we've, we've spent uh, all together, there's, there's a couple of things left to be finished off and a couple of awards still left to be made, but um, we're, we're over three and a half million that's gone just to um, to uh, the, the creative element of, of that. And that's not including the Arts Council and the freelancers, that's literally just through the bit that we've done. Um, and about 1.8 million of that has gone directly to music. Um, so there are other bits like, uh, independent cinema um post-production facilities and things like that within creative but you know over half of what we've spent in creative has gone to music venues to uh recording studios and to rehearsal spaces so um you know we're really proud of what we've been able to do um obviously we wish we could do more like like everybody um you know if there was more money we'd give it um it it, it appears it's you know the likelihood is that there's not going to be any chance of, of the industry being reopened by the start of April, which was what this fund was originally leading people up to. Um, so, you know, realistically, um, there's going to need to be more support. We're working on how that might look, how much it might be, um, where it can go and everything else. Um, I, I'd love to have details to give you now. We, we don't. Um, I can I can say that we're we're working on it. Um, you know, we're talking to various other people and other departments and you know the UK government and stuff like that about what what things might look like, what a culture recovery fund too might look like, and um, 
yeah, we'll let people know as soon as we know. Um, we'll put it out on our Twitter. We'll put it all over the, you know, it'll come out all over the news anyway and stuff. And we'll contact people directly um, to make sure that everyone gets a gets a chance to get something. Amazing, yeah. And it's it, aptly this this kind of series of talks today is called "Fighting the Good Fight," and that's definitely what you guys are doing. Um, doing your end, it must be. You must, yeah, like you say, you must feel really proud of the work that you've achieved in what really is actually a really short space of time and the amount of venues and organizations that you've been able to support is, is amazing. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it, it has felt like a fight of time. Yeah. It's felt like a bit of a battle at times, not with anyone in particular, just, just, you know, the, the, the speaking to people who've been, been, I mean, obviously everyone's been affected by it um, in, in one way or another, but, you know, speaking to the people who run independent venues, um, and grassroots venues they're not doing it because they make money out of it they're doing it because they love it and because they care about it and you know in a huge amount of, of, of cases as you know um, they've sort of stumbled into running a venue or stumbled into promoting um, you know they've started off doing one thing and the next thing they know they're putting the shows on and, and, and running the venue um, and you know it's people's lives um, and, and literally you know, being able to make sure that the people can pay the bills and can continue doing it. You know, obviously, you know, there's that that wider element of making sure that the industry survives and that there are still venues for artists to play in at the end and things like that, which obviously is hugely important. But I think the, you know, the initial um, kind of focus for us was that, you know, we need to make sure that that, that people are surviving through it. Um, you know, and, and thankfully, we've we've been able to do that. Um, as I said, you know, that there are always little bits and pieces that you would do differently given given another chance. There are always, you know, some people that unfortunately haven't been able to get it for whatever reason. Um, and and hopefully, you know, as I say, you know, with the next the next round of funding, you know, some of those things will be things that we can we can adjust. But I think on the whole, um, you know, it's been successful. We've been able to to do a lot of good for a lot of people. So um, yeah, we, we yeah, like I say, yeah, we, we are we're really proud of what we've been able to do with that. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll also probably have a, a few musicians that obviously don't work in a venue or own a venue or run any of the organisations that will receive that direct financial support. So what you know, what opportunities are there for musicians to engage with you as a as a as an entity? Yeah, so and I say obviously supporting the venues in in the long run um, is something which it is is so vital to the the infrastructure of the, the industry without the without the, the the grassroots venues and without the rehearsal spaces and the studios you don't have somewhere to practice somewhere to learn your trade somewhere to, to go and play live and then you get on to be able to do the, the arenas and the festivals and whatever if that's what you want to do um you know what we what we have been able to do is continue with some of the artist support stuff that we do um, we work with PRS on uh, the Momentum Fund, which is for uh, artists at a tipping point in their career. Um, so we directly fund uh, Welsh artists to get supported through that. So, I mean, in terms of through the pandemic, we've seen um, Himalayas, uh, we've had uh, Juice Menix, we've had Adwaith, we've had Magugu, uh, we've had Florence Black um, all get funded. So you know, there's, a, there's a real range of different different types of artists, different styles, Welsh language, English language, uh, hip hop, rock, um, you know, all sorts of different things, which is, which is great. Um, it's, you know, it's always one of the sort of highlights of, of, of the, the quarter, because it's a quarterly fund when I get to sit on the panels and, and, and talk about the Welsh arts and, and, you know, push our artists to be able to get funding for that. Um, but that also gives us a bit of access into the wider funds that the PRS have got. So they do the open fund, which is up to 5,000 for sort of slightly more early stage careers um, and women in music as well. So, you know, more than happy always to talk to people about um, how they can go about getting those type of funds. Um, on, a, on less of a funding sort of level, I suppose, obviously, we've, 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 we have been able to partner with Horizons on the independent venue week tour that they've done. So we've helped support that where a handful of artists have been able to to showcase themselves at venues as well as um, Junior and Holden Absence doing their sort of home sessions for the for the weekend. Um, and then we run a monthly playlist as well, which we kicked off in June, um, mainly because it was something that, you know, we, we didn't have any budget um, because all, all of the budgets, as you can imagine, were redirected towards COVID relief stuff. Um, and it was it was just a way that we could help artists who weren't going to be able to get out and, and play live and do the, the the sort of stuff you would normally do around a, a record release or a single release um, 
because especially at the outset of, of, of the pandemic, obviously people had the schedules built in, they had their releases ready to go. You don't want to sit on it for an indeterminate amount of time waiting to see when you're going to be able to release it. So our playlist is open for anybody who is Welsh or Wales-based um, to submit tracks to. Um, we, we do have to have a copy of the lyrics just to make sure there's nothing too controversial. Um, we're more than happy to have swearing in there, so you don't have to like only send stuff that is clean. But you know, we can't have, as you can as you can appreciate, we can't have things that have got anything too controversial in it. <laughs> um, but we have we've only had to turn away one track in the whole six months that we've been doing it, and that wasn't it, you know even then we don't turn them away. We just go back and say I don't know if we can use this. Have you yeah, got a different yeah. track we can have? Um, and that's been great. You know, we've you know, we, we've averaged sort of um, just about just under thirty artists a month. Um, on that and we've had a real range we've had everything from from death metal to you know we had a track on on the january one that went out last friday um which is like literally just dinosaur sounds Um, we've had a little bit of everything um yeah yeah, it's 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 showcased i think what it's done what it's really been able to do is really show off the, the the range of of what welsh music is i think you know, you go up to someone in the street and say to them about Welsh music and they immediately think of, of Welsh language folk singer-songwriters. Um, and actually, you know, there is a bit of that and we've got brilliant singer-songwriters. Um, but even the Welsh language stuff, you know, you look at bands like Alpha and Adwaith and, you know, there's, there's so much stuff that is is actually is, is not what people assume when they think of the stereotype of, of what Welsh yeah. music is. Um, you know, we've got, we've got some amazing... Um, hip hop and grime artists we've had on there um, over the last the last couple of months. We've got brilliant rock acts like we've always had, um, and I think it's just being able to showcase all of that side by side um, yeah. has has been has been brilliant. You know, it, it it's it it does jump around in terms of um, uh, of, of the sort of the, the the style from one to another. It's not something you put together on a on like a now compilation yeah, where yeah, you run yeah. it. But but I love the fact that it just. It, it really does sort of leap from something really chilled out to like a really dark instrumental electro yeah, yeah. Um, sort of track to then a rock track to a to a grime act to you know something sort of traditionally folky with harps and Welsh language stuff and you know it it I think it really shows what Welsh music actually is um, yeah. so we we've loved that and you know anyone can can send tracks into that so they they just email us at um, creativewales at gov um, or they can tweet us or they can tweet me or they can email it to me or whatever and and you know we'll um we just yeah say we add it on um so yeah we're always trying to do more more with artists um we partner with the arts council on, on different bits and pieces as well like i said earlier we've we've, we've supported forte and beacons um so yeah the more the more we can do the better um and and hopefully we'll be able to as as hopefully the covid stuff starts to um we start to come out of that um, we'll be able to go back to the original plan of directing more yeah. cash into, um, you know, not relief stuff and, and more into um, development and growth and skills development and those type of things to, to really help people go along and thrive. And of course, it's it's Independent Venue Week and we're, we're kind of asking everybody um, this question this week. Um, it's a pretty impossible question to ask, um, presuming that you've been to probably hundreds of gigs over the years. Um, but if you had to pick out a, like a standout gig from an independent venue over the years, it could be any at any time you want. Um, what would you What would you pick? I mean, there are so many, um, <laughs> and, and not just in Wales either, but you know, across into particularly in Bristol, but you know, London and different places as well. But um, I think I mean I, I've I've I'm I'm a rock and metal guy predominantly. Sure. Um, and I always love um, going into into shows in in Fuel in Cardiff because it's it's that classic kind of um, tiny venue where you know it's a it's a cramped little corridor and the stage is stuck stuck in the back and and going into there and you know seeing some some amazing shows in 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 there um, yeah it's 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 so hard to pick a single. Do you know I think I think possibly there was a when one of the first zooms that I I did. Um, when Dempsey still had four bars upstairs. Um, I remember seeing um, a band from Halasley called Cut Ribbons up there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and that was mad because it was like the stage was sort of stuffed. Well, there wasn't a stage up there. They were just sort of stuffed in the corner. And it was it, like soon used to get on the Friday night. It was absolutely rammed. Yeah. Um, 
and you, know, they, you couldn't even tell where the band started and the crowd. <laughs> it was like everybody was just sort of, it, they were almost performing in the round in the end yeah, because everybody yeah. was just sort of on top of each other. And it was just like, you know, you had, I, I think Hugh Stevens was in there, you know, I, I know um, um, Jen Long was in there and uh, Beth Elvin was, was was there. And then all these people, you know, and the eight, you know, from, from, you know, people who were like 16, 17 up to, to sort of, you know, 40, 50 year olds and yeah. everybody just having just such an amazing time watching yeah. a band that you know, the vast majority of people in the room had never heard of before. And I think yeah. that's, that's to me, that's the joy of, of, of the independent venues is, is seeing is often it's like the support acts and stuff. It's, it's the bands that you've never heard of. We usually local um, yeah. and just finding new, you know, new favorite bands all the time. Um, yeah. You know, there's, I love the big shows, you know, I, I love like the last gig I got to before everything closed down was Slipknot in, in, in the arena. And that kind of show obviously is, you know, there's something about that as well, the big yeah. festival shows and things, but um, yeah, just the, in, just, just the, um, the intensity and the kind of the, um, the intimacy of, of, of tiny venues. Um, yeah. Ben and prison at, um, at uh, uh, um, Thekla in, in, Bristol is um, yeah is right up there as well, up but that's well. a Welsh venue, so I'm not I'm not going to that. <laughs> I can imagine that was loud in Thekla, Ben in prison. It was um, yeah, starting to wonder if we were going to sink, but um, yeah, <laughs> it was uh, it was it was good fun. Yeah, you yeah, feel ben. you feel the music in in venues that in little venues like that, and that's that's what I love about places like Fuel and Club and yeah. the pub and Sin City and, and all those places is you you really do feel the sound yes. of, uh, <laughs> of shows like that. Yeah. Amazing! Oh, good stuff. Well, thank you so much, Dave, for joining me today. And yeah, hopefully no we'll uh, see you in a venue at some point soon. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Definitely. Yeah. Hopefully next time we can do this in person somewhere. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Yeah. So um, Fusion really is designed to try to kind of provide opportunity for people to get involved in cultural activity and also for local people to kind of have an influence on, on um, the kind of programming that we do. So I work with uh, lots of the cultural venues in Swansea, um, quite a lot of which are run by the council. Uh, but I also work with all the independents as well and um, independent artists, freelancers, musicians, um, and we work with, with um, the unis, schools, the colleges, um, and really it's about trying to kind of create a network so that we can all learn from each other. Yeah, amazing. I've, obviously, we've done some work together and it's it's always super uh, like forward thinking and, and just really nice to make the arts in general as accessible to as many people as possible, which I guess is your aim, isn't it? Yeah, well, I mean, it's, there's, it's limited for everyone, isn't it? The things that they can try and get involved in. But, um, you know, if you're on a low income as well, or you've got other barriers to getting involved in things, they're the kinds of, um, they're the kinds of things I need to try and, you know, think about really and try and get the other sort of cultural venues and um, activity providers to be thinking about as well if they're not already. Yeah, absolutely. So obviously, um, you know, a lot of this week is is centered around music. So, you know, can you what sort of programs and activities have you done? You know, I know you've done a couple of festivals and um, you know, a few workshops. Do you want to touch upon some of some of those that surround music? Yeah. Um, yeah, so obviously I've worked with yourself and we've um, provided different workshops and things like that to have a go at writing a song or collaborating on something. Um so we do like small scale things like that, all the way up to yeah, providing opportunities to perform. Um, did the um, St Helen's Street Party, obviously not this last summer, but the summer before, yeah. um, and we put on little sort of pop up events and things like that. Um, and also, I'm involved in the new network that's been set up between Swansea and Mannheim in Germany. So if you didn't know. Swansea is twinned with Mannheim and has been for a very long time. Both cities were completely flattened in the Second World War by each, well, not by each other, but by each other's countries. Um, so we kind of have some similarities in, in our evolution. Um, they, so Mannheim's got a um, greater investment in their music um, sphere, but um, they have something called the Pop Academy, which is like a, a building that's kind of like a music hub, just something we would like to sort of work towards. Um, but they're also UNESCO 
city of music as well. Um, and I think, you know, they're really interested in the things that we're doing. And we're really in interested in, in what they're doing as well. And we'd really like to sort of start pairing up so that musicians can get the opportunity to go there, their musicians can get the opportunity to come here and perform, and also for the rest of us to, you know, learn a bit about how each other kind of runs things. Yeah, absolutely. It's um, it's amazing to hear about how how uh, on it they are with their music scene there. It's like not only, you know, I think I think the UK on the whole has a lot to learn from what they're doing and how, how much importance they're putting on their musical infrastructure, I suppose. Um, yeah. Yeah, it'd be nice. It'd be nice if um if we were able to gather that kind of resource. I know Swansea and and basically South Wales in general has got a huge amount of passion, and I think that really comes across. You know, and they they know that that, that that's one of the reasons why they're kind of interested in working with us because they know that that we do we do huge amounts with what we've got. Yeah, amazing, good stuff. So, you know, obviously the year that we've had has meant that. Um, you know, a lot of your normal activities and projects have had to adapt. Um, yeah. But you did put on a fantastic exhibition in Elysium or co-ran uh, an exhibition. Do you, want to, do you want to touch upon that and what that was? Yeah, so um, we kind of worked on um, responding to interest and um, kind of feedback that we'd had from communities and different individuals that we've, we've chatted to and, and um, consulted over the last few years. And also, you know, our peers that have sort of, you know, been involved from different cities. And the feedback really was that a lot of the stuff that happens is a bit blokey. And it's a bit, it's a bit white middle class, you know, um, that, you know, in the city, we've got uh, quite a lot of heritage that's centered around men and privileged men, um, which I guess is similar to what we've seen, obviously, you know, there's been a big backlash against that um, over the last sort of, you know, six months or whatever. And just about how we tell stories and who is valued. And I think uh, basically the Change Makers programme was about valuing the stories of people that have tried to do, um, tried to do, you know, tried to challenge um, inequality, really. Um, so we spoke to people that have been part of the fight for racial equality, rights for LGBT plus people, um, workers' rights, women's rights, um, people with disabilities uh, who have been, you know, fighting for equality um, in their lives, and also people that have been trying to kind of champion you know, green agendas and, and looking after the environment. So, yeah, so we spoke to some amazing people in Swansea and basically, you know, put on an exhibition about them. And I think, you know, this is kind of the shape of things to come for us, really. You know, we want to make sure that our exhibitions are, you know, are varied, but also that they, you know, they represent the people that live here and the interests of people that live here. Amazing. Yeah, it's really good. And, and so, obviously, People can't go to the exhibition now, but is there a way of looking at what what happened anywhere online or? Yes, absolutely. So there's um, there's a there's a sort of a blog spot a Weebly uh, page, which well. is called Change Make Swansea. Um, you can also access that um, through Elysium Gallery's website as well, cool. um, and also if you follow Fusion on uh, Fusion Swansea on Twitter. Um, and sort of just have a look through our page. There's loads of information on there as well. Amazing. Oh, that's awesome. Good stuff. Um, so yeah, like a, a focus that we've had this week on, um, you know, uh, the talks that we've had is kind of roots into the, the job that you've got. And I know from being your mate that you are incredibly passionate about music um, and that music has shaped quite a large chunk of your life as well. Um, do you want to kind of touch upon that and, and how you ended up in the role that you've got and how long you've been in Swansea and yeah, yeah so I came here when I was 19 I think from Cornwall I was a backing vocalist in a soul band when I was lived down there and then when I moved here I started a band with some mates in uni and you know and I've been in bands pretty much ever since um not currently in a band now but would like to be when all this is over um so yeah, I've always been a big music lover, 
and gone out a lot in Swansea and love going to see live music and stuff like that. Um, but I've always kind of been interested in the arts in general as well. That's what I did. My, like I did a degree in English drama and media and worked um, in the community doing all sorts of things. Worked at the YMCA and ran like all the arts projects there for quite a long time. Built a little music studio there and ran lots of things for young musicians. And um, I just knew what it was like, you know, to to be like writing songs in your bedroom and performing with your mates and then not really knowing how to take the next step, you know? And back then when I first was uh, in a band in Swansea, I mean, the only kind of option you really had was to go and record at Mighty Atom. Mm. And I mean, we did so many gigs to, to get the money together. You know, we probably gigged for like a year and a half or something just to be able to have enough money to have like two days with Joe Gibb or something. Mm. Um, who was the producer there at the time. So, you know, I knew what it was like to kind of be scraping about trying to get some money together just to get your stuff onto a CD as it was yeah. back then. Um, you know, but um, I just, yeah, I've kind of always wanted to try and make it less hard for other people because I don't think it's, it, should, it shouldn't have to be like that. You know, it shouldn't have to be that if you've got money mm. or influence or your mum knows somebody or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. And you've got uh, you've got claim to fame of one of the big success stories out of Swansea at the moment in Bandicoot. Do you want to do you want to touch upon that? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm really chuffed for those guys. Basically, I was doing a graffiti project down on High Street with Volcano and um, this little lad turns up with blue hair. And I was, I was like, who are you then? He's like, oh, I'm Billy. And I was like, are you, you know, we're talking about music and stuff. And I was like, oh, I've got this little you know, recording studio in the YMCA, yeah, you guys should come and come and get involved. And he was like, yeah, yeah. And I thought, oh, he's probably not going to come, you know, but they did, they came along and they were brilliant, you know, and we were like, well, these guys have got some talent. And um, yeah, those guys, along with some other really great musicians in Swansea as well. And it's, it's really cool to see them all, you know, just doing what they love. Yeah, they would have been, they would have been young whippersnappers at that point as well. That was, uh, I think they, they did, yeah, did one of their first gigs, I think, was with, with the YMCA, which is, yeah. Which is really amazing. Yeah, yeah um, no, that was really fun. And, and it was weird actually because we put this gig on, it was about like six or seven bands from around Swansea, and um, you know, all really young guys, a few young girls as well. And um, I don't know, about 200 people showed up, you know, wow. you're like, oh my God. <laughs> There's obviously a need, you know, there was obviously a need for, for venues for younger people. And yeah. uh, until you put something on like that, you don't necessarily realize it, you know. No, absolutely. But, um, yeah, it's brilliant to see them doing so well. Really. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, of course, this is um, Independent Venue Week as well, and that's kind of what the celebrations are all about. So, um, kind of wrap things up by asking you the most impossible question and asking you to reminisce on maybe a couple of your or your favourite ever, or just a favourite gig from an independent venue. And we we'll say in Swansea. Yeah. Okay. Keep okay. it local. So um, yeah. Well, I, yeah, I've been to a couple of brilliant gigs in um, in Sin City. Uh, I, I can probably list my three favourite ones. Oh. Were, um, am I allowed three? Yeah, 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 yeah I'll let you. There's, there's, a brilliant, there's a brilliant band from, I think they're from Chicago, um, called Hypnotic Brass Ensemble. Yeah, cool. Uh, who I saw in there, who were... Uh, incredible i have to say if they're ever in town and we're allowed to go out you know <laughs> when we're allowed to go out again yeah. an amazing live band you know maybe not something you'd want to be desperately wanted to listen to at home but there's like i don't know something like 10 brass players who are all like yeah. cousins yeah. who all like play amazingly well yeah. uh, i saw ben howard in there which is also brilliant and um had an amazing night uh, dancing to craig charles in there as well so i'm gonna go and see yeah good stuff amazing well thank you very much thanks for giving up some of your time and sharing if, if people want to get in, you know in touch or follow you it's what what's your social handles and contact deets yeah so um i'm on twitter as fusion swansea um you can also find us on instagram we've got a podcast called come together uh which um i check uh, pretty regularly and we're also on there as change makers as well which is the exhibition that we were talking about well, we'll pop all the pop all the details in the in the thing below so yeah thanks amina take care and hopefully yeah. see you in the flesh soon at a gig that'd be yeah. good <laughs> cheers mate. thanks mate